Welcome back to Peel Science. You know, there's some things in science that are really cool and really disgusting at the same time. I want to show you one of them here today. So I've got an ordinary balloon and my ordinary breath coming out. <laughs> Crazy balloon, get away from me. Bring on the liquid nitrogen. Time for the safety glasses and the good stuff. I'll take the balloon, set it right in here and start to cool things down. Uh, way down. There you go. What we're seeing here is a great example of Charles' law, which says a decrease in temperature will lead to a decrease in volume. Smaller and smaller and smaller. So the balloon gets smaller and smaller because the temperature is going down and the volume's gonna go down. Yeah. It's down there. Frozen. That has essentially taken that balloon and collapsed it. Look at it. It's just a flat balloon now. But remember it's filled up with my breath. So I've got a cup here. I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna cut it open. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see that? Look at that. That's my breath. Frozen. Isn't that cool? So now look, it's frozen all the way down. It's still a little bit coming off the top there. And that's my breath. Here comes the gross part. When do you ever get a chance to drink your own breath or eat your own breath? Here goes nothing. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. Now, if that wasn't gross enough, I figured, why not try one more time? Let's talk about what's going on here. The breath is going in, it is liquefied, at least some of it has, and some of it has frozen solid, and then it starts to make noise. Now, first of all, the nitrogen is going to boil off because that's what's happening with all the liquid nitrogen anyway. It's above minus 320 degrees. But then the oxygen is going to start to boil off as well as it starts to heat up. You're going to hear it. Then the carbon dioxide. Now, the carbon dioxide is turned to a solid because it froze, but it's going to sublimate and turn into a gas. And the water, it's pretty much going to stay frozen. One more time. Oh, that's just ate right. It's my own breath. That, that just ain't right. I think we've learned something here today. I think maybe we've learned a little too much here today. <laughs> that was nuts. Okay, <laughs> can taste the remnants of my own breath and um, that's odd. I, I think mostly it was the CO2 still in there and not a whole lot of water vapor. The reason is it just started to fizz, kind of like an antacid tablet <laughs> shooting out of my mouth. So there you go. You've ever wanted to taste your own breath, well now you know how. We got lots more liquid nitrogen stuff all over the place. In fact, get some of the videos, I'll pop them up right here. And lots of other things happening at Beal Science, things blowing up. Come on over and visit me. Let's learn some more science. And maybe have a little lesson in brushing our teeth. My own chemistry students aren't immune from my antics. 
During class just the other day, I handed Chris here a pink balloon and said, go ahead and fill that up. And he did, and I took out the liquid nitrogen and froze it down just like you saw me do. I didn't tell him what was going to happen next, but I cut it open and dumped it into a cup. And the rest of the class down there was watching. And then I said, Chris, go ahead and drink that. He obliged, reluctantly. But talk about a way to capture people's attention. Sometimes all you need is just a little liquid nitrogen and your breath in a balloon. And now you've got the intention of everyone. And maybe you can trick them into learning some gas laws. To me, that's what science is all about.